Whenever AEW take a shot at WWE, which admittedly does happen quite a lot, the one thing you always hear in response is that AEW should focus on themselves. But when you realise that the overwhelming majority of the most competitive moves in this new wrestling war have actually been made by WWE, well, maybe Cody Rhodes has the right to smash a throne if he so pleases. Let's get to it. I'm Andy for What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 anti-AEW moves WWE made out of spite. Number 10. Evolve versus Fight for the Fallen WWE's first directly competitive move against AEW was to counter-program a charity show. This happened on the 13th of July 2019. Fight for the Fallen, which ended up raising $150,000 for people affected by gun violence, was counter-programmed by Evolve 131, which was suspiciously airing for the very first time on WWE Network in a head-to-head -head time slot. What a coincidence! A card featuring WWE signed talent like Matt Riddle and Adam Cole was sent out to battle against a bloody charity show. Number 9. Pissant Paul Cast your minds back to the 2019 WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony. During the DX induction, Billy Gunn, who was already signed to AEW as a coach, cracked a little joke about Vince McMahon no longer being able to fire him. To which Triple H responded, Billy, let's be honest, he will buy that pissant company just to fire you again. That adjective, pissant, has stuck with fans ever since. A harmless spot of dick-swinging bravado from Triple H at the time, but it became ammunition against him. Particularly when the Wednesday Night Wars kicked in and that pissant company started whooping his NXT product pretty much every single week in the ratings. Maybe, uh, maybe Triple H should have used a different word there. Might have worked out better for him. Number 8. Blood and guts and things of that nature. Trying to present competitors as rinky-dink low-class mud shows compared to his big glossy sports entertainment enterprise has always been part of Vince McMahon's playbook. It was during WWE's Q2 2019 earnings call that he said WWE would never, and I quote, do blood and guts and things of that nature such as what is being done by our new potential competitor. AEW had only held three shows by that point, with Cody and Dustin Rhodes' blood-soaked battle easily the uh, reddest thing they'd done to that point. But the comment was quickly turned on its head. AEW registered blood and guts as a trademark for a show name, and by May 2021, they had their own version of War Games, courtesy of Vince McMahon. Number 7. Calling Eddie Kingston and Ricky Starks Both Ricky Starks and Eddie Kingston received suspiciously timed phone calls from WWE in 2020, who suddenly, out of nowhere, wanted to offer contracts to two wrestlers they could have signed at any stage over the past few years after they'd impressed on TNT in open challenge matches with Cody Rhodes. Kingston and Starks have both revealed as much in interviews but, perhaps sensing that WWE was suddenly extending these offers so that AEW couldn't have them, not because they actually wanted to sign them, they ended up inking with AEW instead. WWE's signing policy has changed a lot since then, and it's safe to say that something like this probably wouldn't happen now. But letting Cody's Open Challenge series do their scouting for them showed that even in the summer of 2020, WWE's talent hoarding era was alive and well. Number 6. From WWE Network to USA Network. WWE moved NXT from its own network to USA Network as a direct response to Dynamite's launch in 2019. Now, there are usually two counter-arguments to this, and neither of them stack up. Number one is that NXT was on Wednesdays first, which, yeah, I mean, sure, but they were on a streaming platform, not TV, and TV is considerably more lucrative. Plus, the show was only an hour long. And number two, the other counter-argument is that NXT would have eventually moved on to TV anyway, which is pure speculation. Maybe it would have, but also maybe it wouldn't have. There's no way of telling for sure. So this point really holds no weight. Make no mistake, this was a clear move to undermine AEW, stifle its growth, and prevent the promotion from taking off. That AEW's ratings immediately went up when NXT moved to Tuesdays in 2021 shows that it actually worked to a degree. Number five, I don't consider them competition. 
AEW is where they are, said McMahon during WWE's Q2 2021 earnings call. I don't know what their plans are. I don't consider them competition like I would WCW back in the day. Nowhere near close to that. And yeah, AEW aren't as close as WCW were, and perhaps they never will be. But when you spend the best part of three years making aggressive moves to undermine someone else's market share, brother, that's called competition. Number four, Britt Baker takes over. It's a pretty straightforward one. This at TakeOver War Games in November 2019, when Britt Baker's boyfriend, Adam Cole, took a nasty bump, WWE decided to swing round to the AEW standout for her shocked reaction. It was a nudge-nudge, wink-wink exercise in undercutting somebody the competition had earmarked as a future star. And it happened despite Baker being informed by WWE that because she was behind the announce table and the cage was in the way, there was no way she could be seen on camera. Triple H apologised to Baker afterwards, saying that WWE didn't mean for it to happen and, well, if you believe that, come here friends, because I've got some magic beans I'd love to sell you. Number 3. Live from the Garden AEW drew over 20,000 fans to Arthur Ashe Stadium for their New York City debut in September 2021, doing so despite WWE attempting to oversaturate the market by announcing their own show at Madison Square Garden in the same city 12 days beforehand. WWE had no New York date on the calendar until a Maroon 5 concert scheduled for MSG on the same day, September 10th, was suddenly cancelled. That window opened, WWE leapt through it, and they ended up getting outdrawn in their own home turf by around 7,000 people. People. Number 2. Supersized Smackdown WWE knew they were in for a tough ride ratings-wise on the 15th of October 2021, when Smackdown was moved from Fox to FS1 due to baseball coverage. Aware that AEW Rampage might end up finishing above Smackdown as a result of this in the key 18-49 to 49 demographic, they added an extra 30 minutes going head-to-head -head with Rampage, loading those 30 minutes with proven needle movers in Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Rampage's 18 to 49 viewers were just 1,000 short of SmackDowns across the full broadcast. But the extra 30 minutes, those head to head 30 minutes, was AEW's. SmackDown was defeated, losing 328,000 viewers to 285,000 viewers in the demo. And yet WWE, the very next week, came back for more. And at number one, the SmackDown replay. One week after after supersizing SmackDown, WWE decided to take a different route with their direct head-to-head -head competition. On the 22nd of October, they decided that they were going to hold two straight replays of the show immediately after the broadcast, the first of which would be airing at 10pm. This was going head-to-head -head with a preempted episode of AEW Dynamite. The show had been moved, here we were, head-to-head -head Dynamite versus SmackDown, and it looked very much like WWE was trying to flex on the rival promotion by attempting to beat it with a bloody replay. How embarrassing that would be. Well, Rampage ended up scoring an 18 to 49 rating of 0.22. The head-to-head -head SmackDown replay, meanwhile, notched a 0.16. And again, the 18 to 49 demographic is how TV shows are ranked. This means that Dynamite ended up finishing 24th on the night amongst cable and broadcast shows, while the first SmackDown replay that it battled with finished at 35. Now, this was no great surprise. An original AEW show should outdo a WWE replay, considering most WWE fans will have already watched SmackDown in the first place. But still, WWE, the market leaders, this giant company, they were so got into that they felt they had to counter-program a company they are exponentially bigger than on two consecutive weeks, and then lost both head-to-head -head slots. Make no mistake, this shouldn't be happening. WWE is about 13 times bigger than AEW, and yet here we are. So that's our list, but what do you guys think? Let us know down in the comment section below. After that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Then you can follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and myself at AndyHMurray, where you can tell me how wrong I am. Bye!